Hello and welcome back to the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Brenniger. We flipped the Dirty Mind record over to Side B, and Uptown is the first song that kicks off Side B. And uh, we're going to be discussing this formerly grimy, gritty, underground neighborhood of Minneapolis that, of course, has since been gentrified. The Uptown of today is still a pretty cool neighborhood, but it doesn't have the same grittiness and griminess and authenticity that maybe the Uptown of the 70s and early 80s had. I didn't visit Uptown when I was uh, that age. I would have been a very, very young child. But I've spent some time in Uptown in the 90s and up till today. So I've seen a little bit of its of its change over the past couple of decades. I imagine the Uptown of today looks and feels nothing like it did 40 years ago when Prince wrote the song. So I have Christy from the Mountains in the Sea podcast and Killer Fun podcast with me to talk about Uptown. Hi, Christy. Hi, it's a delight to be back. Thank you. Thank you. And if you wouldn't mind giving the podcast listeners a little brief synopsis of both of your podcasts, One's, one is Prince related and one is not, but both could be very interesting to a listener. So if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. So The Mountains and the Sea is a Prince podcast that I make with my husband. We talk about the highs, lows, and a time capsule of each and every Prince album. And we also look at ancillary material and fashion and videos, all kinds of stuff. So it's good fun. We enjoy doing it. You can find us on Twitter at tmats t-m-a-t-s podcast. And Killer Fun is sort of a ancillary true crime podcast we look at the intersection of crime and entertainment and where they kind of intersect as an entertainment venue and in real life like can things really happen stuff like that you can find us on twitter at killer fun pod cool thanks appreciate sure, that. Thank I, you. I like i like the mountains in the sea podcast oh, I'm, I'm a you. fan thank uh, you the i like i enjoy the um the banter back and forth between your husband and you, uh, I think it really is. And you guys are both very knowledgeable and in, in your own way. You like, And I like the fact that you have a different, um, like when you enjoy some of Prince's later music more, which I appreciate because there's a lot of us. And I grew up with Prince in the early 80s. So that is my era more right. so than the 90s. But I, I totally appreciate and I totally dig those who like Prince's later music because it makes me appreciate it more when I hear the enthusiasm that others have for his later material. And it it, it causes me to pause and, and look back at some of those songs that people are praising so much. And I'm like, yeah, you know, that is a really good song. I should have, I should have list, been listening to this in the 90s. I don't know why I wasn't. <laughs> well, that's all right. As long as you get to it now. Well, and I kind of feel the same way about... Prince's earlier music that I haven't been super familiar with and somebody talks about how much they like it and maybe it's a song I've heard before and didn't love and then I hear somebody talk about it so excitedly and I'm like well, maybe I need to go back and listen to that again and I can really appreciate it more when I whereas I couldn't before when people like stuff they kind of help you to like stuff too yeah I'm with you on that one. Yeah. And speaking of Prince's earlier material, that's what we're yeah. here to talk about. Yes, so, we sure are. We're we're doing Uptown, which was the first single off of Dirty Mind. It was the first U.S. release single. It didn't make any splash on the pop charts. Prince had not really crossed over at this point. He did have one crossover song with I Want to Be Your Lover off the previous yeah. album. But Dirty Mind, for all of its critical acclaim did not cross over at the time it was released. Uh, it, I think it was just a little too a little too raw and a little too um, explicit in a lot of the subject matter, not necessarily really uptown. Fair. Yeah. But I th it just was, it took a different spin. Like he, he went off in a different direction after the, the Prince album and the pop radio wasn't ready for it. And a lot of this, a lot of the music recorded for this album wasn't really meant for pop radio. As right. far as I can understand and tell. So even though it was a single and it did moderately okay on like the dance charts and some of the other um, secondary charts, but the the pop charts, no, it, it made no no dent at all. 
Which I think is kind of a shame because there's very often a look at what was chosen to be a single on a Prince album and not agree with the selection. Mm -hmm. And here I thought this was a great selection. This is a great song to choose as a single. Yeah, I agree. I I don't understand why it didn't do better, but I guess maybe you're right. They just they weren't ready for it. Yeah, I mean it's got a great funk guitar riff oh, so um, that goes good. throughout. It's it's really funky song, nice synth line, and well, and while it's the interesting lyrics... mention that that um, because the uh, the bass line that it's based off of, uh, Des Dickerson said that it was something that Andre Simone had actually written, and Andre Simone's never spoken publicly about whether it was really his or not. So I think that's just a little interesting yeah, tidbit that there's, you know, that he he was so protective of his own music, but he also kind of borrowed a little bit and wasn't always great about giving credit. And it's just kind of an interesting insight into how things were going at this yeah. time. But I also really appreciate that Andre Simone said, well, you know, this is I don't need to talk about this. This is not important. Yeah, I think at the time, a lot of, like, Prince and, and his band members, it was all for the greater good. Right. All for the greater good of pushing Prince, because, you know, Prince's success meant their success at the time. It's like if right. We can, if, if Prince, as an artist, can succeed and cross over and become successful, then we'll all be successful. Right. I, I'm sure Andre at this time was thinking, you know, I, I have my own songs that I want to write. And if Prince is successful, maybe that can help me get a record contract of my own. And ultimately it did. <laughs> so right. He wasn't wrong. And I just, I don't know if this is true or not, but I just feel like they probably had um, like this collective, we're going to do this and we're going to share ideas and we're going to, you know, if I, if I have a baseline that really works, you know, I'm going to give it to Prince and he's going to record it for this song. And I don't necessarily at the time, they were thinking, I don't need credit because right. I'm part of Prince's band, you know, and I'm going to get my time to shine. And that was mm-hmm. likely the thought process. Don't know this for a fact, but that's how I kind of uh, imagine it might have been. But right. That's a good point. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, give credit. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? In hindsight, I mean, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially when we're talking about residuals and making right. money off of a song. If your name's not on the credits, I don't think right. that you're legally... Which, and uh, Prince did much better about that later, where he gave credits to people who actually didn't have much to do with the writing of the lyrics or the music, but gave them credit officially so that they could be taken care of in that way. So it's yeah. it's an interesting dynamic. There's a lot of... A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, Yeah. could be just um, he's just learned from past mistakes or just was better or understood how the business worked a bit more. And so he wanted to do what's right as opposed to just making sure that he got his name out there because at this time he was still a struggling artist himself. So he wasn't really in a position to um, offer that. Yeah, he didn't share. Yeah. So Uptown is... One of the more commonly, or I should say, better known songs off of Dirty Mind, and not just because it was a single, because really that made no difference at the time since it wasn't successful, but it's a well-known song from the standpoint of its of its <clears throat> subject matter and and the location that the song take takes place in uptown Minneapolis, right? And also the, its inclusion on the the hits and b-sides from 1993 where a lot of a lot of prince fans maybe got their their opportunity to hear some of his older music for the first time through that collection i know for myself and i i mentioned this in a previous episode but i came into prince from the 1999 album and i never up until that point i had never taken the time to go back to his previous four albums prior to 1999 until i until i got the hits collection and i thought to myself well this this music is really good i don't there's no reason for me not to revisit his pre-1999 albums if this is indicative of what the kind of music that's on them so i went back to it and uptown was one of those songs on that collection that i really gravitated towards uh a lot of it was because of the 
the lyrics and and what the song was about spoke to me um and i i really enjoyed his willingness to um give some examples of what life was like back then in this part of part of the city and i had friends that grew up and lived in minneapolis at the time i was living only an hour and a half two hours away from the twin cities and in the in the 90s i had friends that went to the university of minnesota in minneapolis and so when i would go visit them we would often hang out in in this part of town and i'm trying to remember in the 90s it was starting to become gentrified it was it was well on its way towards gentrification and it wasn't probably the same uh same uptown that prince experienced in the 70s and maybe early 80s but um i i was familiar with the song and i knew it's correlation to that neighborhood in minneapolis that prince spent time in and uh, i always thought it was kind of cool that i was kind of like walking down the same streets even though i'm sure a lot of the the buildings and a lot of the businesses and even the vibe and the people hanging out there were not the same even in the 90s but i i really enjoyed that aspect of it and having been able to spend time in that neighborhood yeah that's really neat Uptown seems okay. to have like a, it's like you could take two meanings from it. When I listen to it, you could take two things from it. And I know the relate, and I'm thinking the relationship part of the song is, is just a way to relate um, the listener to what's going on. Like if you're just singing a song about, oh, check out my neighborhood. It's really cool. There's artists yeah. and there's this is countercultural revolution happening. You know, people are just probably thinking, well, I've never been there, so I can't relate to it. I don't really know what you're talking about. But if you kind of put this um, spin about a relationship and meeting a girl in this in the context of what's happening in in this neighborhood, then you can start to think, okay, all right, well, you know, I've met girls before that maybe didn't um, understand what my vibe was or what was going on with me. And I was I want to show her her this whole side of this city or this part of, of myself that you know, introduce that person to something new. And that's while Prince is introducing this character in this song, this woman that he meets, and we'll get to the lyrics in a bit, Mm -hmm. but it's like she, he's introducing her to this neighborhood while simultaneously introducing the listener to this neighborhood. And so it kind of serves as Mm -hmm. a way to introduce us to uptown. Right. Through the eyes of this, this girl that he meets in this song. Yeah, and she doesn't really, she's not familiar maybe with this part of the city so much either, that he's kind of saying you can dress this way and not be gay, you can be, you can be different here, and it's okay, it's yeah. not necessarily a uh, an issue to be different mm-hmm. here, I like that. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's really what the song is all about from the way I take it and the way I interpret it. It's it's really just about Prince singing a song about a neighborhood, about a part, and but also like a uh, as a metaphor for a way of life, I guess maybe, and just um, you know a a, a, the, a a theoretical place, even though it actually exists in real life. <laughs> yes, and I think that that's uh, definitely what he's getting to that it's uptown's more of a state of mind and not a so much a physical place. It is a physical place, but it's, you know, it is, that's where he spent time. That's where he became inspired, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just uptown Minneapolis uptowns everywhere. Uptown's a way of being. Yeah. And I like the fact that he, frames the song and the lyrics in that way so it can be relatable to somebody who didn't grow up in minneapolis wasn't there in the 70s didn't see that side of the city and right was a, and, and and they can apply that to any you know neighborhood in their own town or even like you said if they're it's just a it's just a frame of mind it's it's a it's a metaphor for something else and you don't have to live in a big city that has a neighborhood like this in order to think to yourself this is a place where I want to be or this place appeals to me and I don't have to travel there. I don't have to travel hundreds of thousands of miles to go there. I can create my own uptown. You yeah. know, I, I can surround myself with people and, that have the same kind of values I do or have the same openness and freedom of expression that I do. 
and we can create our own uptown and that's what it's all about you know and and, and for me i also think about what ultimately what paisley park the idea of paisley park <laughs> you yeah. know like took uptown and the and the concepts behind this in this song and then created his own like okay uptown maybe even in the 80s when he was um writing songs like paisley park it, the gentrification of that neighborhood might have already begun and he was thinking okay well i need to transfer this idea because uptown now is something different it's not the same as it used to be let's take this and move it to a new location called paisley park <laughs> yes i well you stole my thunder because i totally had that in that uptown is really a precursor to paisley park that paisley park ended up being a physical place but before it was that it was a state of mind it was a a freedom and a collective and a it was people and I think Uptown's exactly the same way. It's just an early version of that. It was how he saw it in his city and how it played out in his life. And then that kind of changed into something even broader, which was Paisley Park. Yeah. Well, all I can yeah. say to that is great minds think alike. So yeah. Amen. Think amen. We had the same thought process <laughs> on how Uptown was a precursor to Paisley Park and I think that connection, we both agree, is is there, and it makes sense. Absolutely. Okay, so I guess we'll go through the lyrics in this song, and and I'll I'll preface this by saying this song Prince sings in a very high falsetto. Yes. In a in a bit softly too. So in his, he can sing in a falsetto and sing really strongly and enunciate, but in this song, it took me a while. Like the first few times I listened to the song, and in Head as well, which is the song right after this. Right. There's it's the the lyrics and the words are very sung very softly in many cases where it's not quite so obvious what he's saying. And so some of these lines, I really never knew exactly what was being said. Uh-huh. Um, I picked up there were certain lines that I could easily pick up and they were the ones that I I was drawn to because I understood them. <laughs> mm-hmm. But also they were clear to me what was being said and the other lines I'm like, ah, I'm not so sure. But thanks to the Internet and thanks to people who have transcribed lyrics over the over the years and decades, we now have at least what we believe to be accurate lyrics to the song. Yes. So I'll go through them now. OK, In the great. first verse, he says, she saw me walking down the streets of your fine city. It kind of turned me on when she looked at me and said, come here. Now, I don't usually talk to strangers, but she looks so pretty. What can I lose if I just give a little ear? What's up, little girl? I ain't got time to play. Baby didn't say too much. She said, are you gay? Kind of took me by surprise. I didn't know what to do. I just looked her in the eyes and said, no, are you? (laughs) And so I'm going to pause there because he's telling a story. Like he's basically, this is like a story verse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is absolutely a story song. And I like story songs. I like it when Prince does story songs. Those are always I'm easily attracted to story songs. Let's put it that way. (laughs) Well, it paints a picture in your mind. Exactly. So, okay. So I thought it was interesting. She saw me walking down the streets of your fine city. Yeah. And I'm wondering if he's saying that it's not his city or if it's any city. I know. When I read this, I really was a little confused because I didn't know that he said your fine city. I always yeah, thought I mean, he said she saw me walking down the streets of our fine city or something along those lines or my yeah, fine yeah. city. I didn't know he was saying your. I really no, didn't. I didn't either. And it didn't make sense to me why he would refer to it as not his, not his city. So, And I think that that's a, our first clue, probably, that this is a metaphorical place more than a literal place. Yeah, I would say so. I would say yeah. so. This it's it's a it's an intriguing turn of phrase there and I, yeah it took me by surprise as well yeah and i like when he says it kind of turned me on when she looked at me and said come here <laughs> <laughs> so he's just being accosted by this 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 woman walking down the street like hey come here you know <laughs> and i don't know that 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 rarely happens to me <laughs> so, <laughs> i don't know what Same. it is if if women back then were a little more forward hey come here i want to talk to you <laughs> And they said, like, I don't usually talk to strangers, but she looked so pretty. What can I lose if I just gave a little ear? So that's that's kind of a fun 
hmm. fun way to describe his interaction with this woman. She she just told him to come here so he could talk so she so she could talk to him. And he goes, "What's up, little girl? I ain't got time to play." So, <laughs> so he's basically saying, "That's cool. I'll talk to you, but let's uh, make it snappy. You know. I got places to be. <laughs> right? I got places to be, people to talk to, and I wasn't planning on talking to you, but you're you're pretty, so I'll give you the time. I'll give you the yeah. time. I'll give you a minute if you make it worth my while." <laughs> But then she takes him by surprise by by leading off the conversation with "Are you gay?" And so, <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, that's that's really bold, like to tell somebody to come over here so he so she can ask him a straight up question: Are you gay?" That seems <laughs> a little rude, a little bold. A little rude, but also I think that's maybe the indication that she's not from here either, because yeah. if she were from uptown, she wouldn't worry so much about it first of all and yeah. she maybe wouldn't question it so much because you're a little freer to dress how you like yeah right and prince is probably looking at this now and saying okay well, time to time to educate her yes <laughs> you know she she led she led the conversation off with are you gay and based on nothing but physical appearance you know yeah. I, you have to assume that she just saw him dressed how prince dressed back then and thought, thought to herself, well, geez, that's not the typical clothes that I see men wear. So, uh -huh. but he's he kind of hot. So I wonder if he's. Yeah, I want to know if I want to know if he's gay <laughs> I want to know if because... I have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I want to know if I have a shot with him. But based on how he's dressed, I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, you know, he was wearing his thigh high boots and bikini briefs or whatever, and I don't <laughs> yeah. know if he actually wore those outside or if that was just his stage clothes, but. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know it's either. Like to be a little cold, in Minneapolis. To for, yeah, for like for that, but nine out of, nine out of the twelve months it would be. <laughs> so then he uh, he said to himself, "She's just a crazy, crazy, crazy little mixed up dame. She's just a victim of society and all its games. Now where I come from, we don't let society tell us how it's supposed to be. Our clothes, our hair, we don't care. It's all about being there." So that's the last section of verse one. So he's already kind of explaining how she, he feels that she doesn't get it. You know, she's just, she, she can't help it. This is how she was raised. This is, you know, right. based on what society's expectations are of men at the time and women as well, that she has like these preconceived notions of how men are supposed to dress and act. And she sees him looking maybe a little, different than what she's used to and so yeah she wants to know if he's gay and just assuming that because somebody dresses differently that that's possible and right. not to say that you know a gay man back then wouldn't have dressed like prince and it was a valid probably a valid question but just the fact that she felt so emboldened to to lead a conversation off of that instead of just trying to get to know him first and figuring it out on her own right. or leading up to that so Princess definitely wants to educate her. <laughs> yeah. And she must be her, really pretty. Yeah, she, we have to assume She must that be really close. pretty or else he wouldn't have bothered to take the time, I don't think. Not at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But at this point in the song, Prince is, is this is the story, as we've already mentioned, uh -huh. is yeah. another way for Prince to kind of lead into this discussion about um, gender dynamics. And, right freedom of expression and oh and by the way i'm not gay people have been asking because i sing in a falsetto and wear yeah. skimpy sing clothes a falsetto, sing yeah. really high dress a little um like women would possibly dress back then mm -hmm. so it's i get it he gets it but i like yeah. his response no are you <laughs> <laughs> yes i love that that line in and of itself always struck me because i i could understand that last part where he said are you gay? Kind of took me by surprise. I didn't know what to do. I looked her in her eyes and said, no, are you? Yeah. I could understand those, those lines pretty clearly always when I first heard this song. Yeah. Oh yeah. I thought it was very funny. What a nice comeback. Yeah. Very witty. Prince was very witty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or at least in the song, he's very witty. I think he was very witty in general. I think so uh, too, but you know, you always have a little bit of time to think about it too in a song. Right. You know, there's no like laying in bed. Oh man, I should have said that. When no, he came this. up. He came up with the perfect line right there. No, are you? <laughs> yeah. 
He makes it clear, though, that he's not gay. Right. He's telling her, so he wants her to know that she has a chance. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he definitely wants, he finds her attractive. So it's all about being there. And that was a line, and I will admit, I I misheard the lyrics there at the end many, many times. I used to think he said, it's all about being free, not being there. Oh, it, it okay. took me, yeah, it was like, for whatever reason, you know, you hear what you want to hear, you hear things that make sense to you, right? You listen to songs, and it made sense to me if he said, if he would have said, We don't let society tell us how it's supposed to be, our clothes, our hair, we don't care, it's all about being free because I thought it rhymed with be. We don't let yes. society well, tell us totally how it's supposed sense. to be, yeah. our clothes, our hair, we don't care, it's all about being there. So, it, there rhymes with care, but free would have rhymed with B, which is the line before. So yeah. it's not what he says based on all the internet um, documented lyrics, but I always, yeah, like, but nobody can tell you how to sing it in your car. So you <laughs> sing it any way you like. Exactly. And I think I probably still do say free because for many, many, many years, that's what I thought he said. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. All right. So then the chorus is everybody's going uptown. That's where I want to be. Uptown, set your mind free. Uptown, got my body hot. Get down. I don't want to stop. So it's everybody's great. going uptown. That's yeah. where you want to be. It's where you want to be. If you're listening to the song and you're digging it, it sounds great, right? Yeah. It's a party. It's fun. It's where you want to go for your inspiration. It's all good. Yeah. And you can just be whatever. You can be however you want. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you're feeling like, on a day-to-day basis, you have to maybe hide who you are because of where you work or where you live. This is a place where you can let your guard down, uh, let your hair down, so to speak, mm-hmm. and and dance however you want to dance, dress however you want to dress, kiss whoever you want to kiss, you know. And it's and in this case, his setting setting your mind free. And Prince has got my body hot, so he's intermingling like the freedom of expression and also putting that those sexual references in there because you know it's a prince song right yeah so there's gotta be that undercurrent so verse two then he goes back into the story as soon as we got there good times were rolling white black puerto rican everybody just a freaking good times were rolling she started dancing in the streets girl she's just gone mad you know she even made love to me best that i ever had i'm gonna pause here (laughs) Okay. So I like I like uh, I mean I think a lot of people quote the white black Puerto Rican everybody just a freak and you, you hear or you see people quoting those particular lines from the song a lot because it yeah it um, speaks to kind of racial equality and in uptown everybody's coming together to have fun. But I also kind of think that he makes a point to call people out because there is differences but we all have things in common too i think it's more about saying that we're different but can find commonality well yeah for sure yeah and i think that that's because a lot of people put the see well prince didn't see color no he did he says it right here he saw it he just celebrated it he saw the differences but also saw what that brought to the culture and the music scene and how they all brought something different. They weren't all the same. And that was what was beautiful about it, that everybody had this great commonality in their uniqueness. I think, I don't know. I see a lot of people use that as princey color and I don't think that that's true at all. Oh, no, I definitely don't agree with that as well. And I think because he mentions all the different races and all the differences that people are coming together to just have a good time. Right. It, to me, it says that you can be different. You can be who you are. You can be bring your own uniqueness to the party. Yes. And yes. we're all going to celebrate that uniqueness together because right. because we are all here to have fun. Right. We can we're be different to and uptown. still get along. Yeah, yeah, we're coming to Uptown to celebrate each other, celebrate life. And if you're white, black, Puerto Rican, everybody's just a freaking because yeah, exactly. everybody can get together and have fun together. And we don't have to have like, here's the white section, here's the black section, here's the Puerto Rican section. Right. And every, there's no segregation um, in Uptown, whether it's a, a frame of mind or a state of mind or if it's an actual location. 
everybody feels welcome here and that's and you know bring to the table what who you are and bring bring to uptown what yes. you represent and we're all going to celebrate it and we're all going to have fun you don't have to yeah it doesn't have to be this every, everybody's the same background to have right. fun and bring it's your it's not own. colorblind it's a rainbow exactly exactly yeah. and that's and that's really what i think what he's saying here and, and if uh, other people interpret it to that you know it doesn't matter if you're white black or puerto rican because everybody's the same that i don't think is the intent and i never no, i never took I, it that way either i always felt it, like this is where you can be who you are yes and you don't have to pretend to be anybody else be yourself yes agreed so she started dancing in the streets. So she's obviously taken to this area, to Uptown. She she likes this place, <laughs> this frame mm-hmm. of mind. And it didn't take much to get her to start partying with Prince. Uh, yeah. He quickly converted her. <laughs> she was a quick conversion, I would say. And then uh, he even mentions, of course, once again, the reference to sex. She even made love to me, best that I ever had. <laughs> Yeah, you know, had to throw that in there. Like it wasn't just good sex; it was the best that I. It was ever the had. best. Well, and you wonder, like, how much experience did he have at this point? A lot, maybe a lot, maybe a little. It's right. all relative, I mean, if right? Have, if you don't have much experience, the best I ever had doesn't mean a whole lot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're just gonna assume that um, it was really good. Yeah. You have to go with what he's what he's suggesting here. And he says, "Girl, she's just gone mad." So, and I'm I'm assuming mad here just means, you know, having a good time. Just yeah, not she's just crazy. No, not, not in the clinical sense, for sure. No. The more sure. colloquial sense, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. And then he repeats the line about talking to strangers. He says, I don't usually talk to strangers, but this time is all right. Yeah, because yeah, he got laid. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, it all worked out this time. Like he yeah. was able to convert this kind of closed-minded woman to come into uptown and having a good time. And oh yeah, by the way, I also got some. Uh-huh. So yep. This time it's all right. She got me hot. I couldn't stop. Good times were rolling all night. All night, yeah. And then he kind of repeats the last section, which is very similar to the first one. But I think there's some lines differently. Yeah, he does different. It's like the same kind of structure, but he. Changes up some of the lines. He goes, yeah. good times are rolling all night, all night, yeah. Now where I come from, we don't give a damn. We do whatever we please. It ain't about no downtown, nowhere bound, narrow-minded drag. It's all about being free. Yeah. And there he actually says free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he does. See, and, and no wonder you were confused earlier, because he does say free later. He does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> freedom, you know, the song's about freedom of expression and being who you are. Right. And so to me, it makes sense. And I'll just always kind of think of that's how the lyrics go, even though it's not really what it is. <laughs> it's all right. I don't think you would care. No, I don't think so either. It's all about being free anyway, right? Free yeah. to free to interpret his lyrics in a, <laughs> however <laughs> I want. <laughs> I don't give a damn. I'll do whatever. <laughs> I want. Uh, so downtown, I don't know if, if he means like downtown Minneapolis or if that's just his way of saying downtown, like where the business people are and where yeah, like. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just like the you know the snooty place it's not the place for the artist free thinkers that's where everybody who's sucked into the corporate mindset is yeah all, they're the all people who bought into the yeah they've all bought into the whatever that they're trying he's trying to get away from yep it's not about that no narrow-minded drag here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i like that yeah. phrasing too yeah Nowhere bound, narrow-minded drag yeah, and it's it just it brings to mind a couple of different things like being dragged down, but also not drag as in dress. Perhaps you don't have to be like buttoned up in a suit. If you know a dude wants to wear high heels and a dress, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. drag has different meanings. I was always taken to me like drag as in like a bummer. Right. Or, yeah. But yeah, it could it could be you could take it in a different way too and think about it from the perspective of men dressing up in drag. So Right. I think that that's kind of intentional that it kind of means both things. Yeah. 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 Good point. So then we go back to the chorus, everybody's going uptown, that's where I want to be, uptown, set your mind free. Uptown, got my body hot, get down, I don't want to stop. 
And at this point, you get kind of like the outro and kind of repeats it. And he's like singing Uptown. Yeah. And everybody's going. Everybody's going. And I like got to, got to, got to go Uptown. Yeah. And um, that's that's a fun way to end it. And once again, the story is is cool. I like the story songs in general, as I already mentioned, and how this kind of ends on a high note. Everybody's partying. He's able to convert this woman into being more of a free thinker showing her the ropes in in uh your fine city (laughs) yeah it's just a cool song i i just love uptown i love the message i love i love it too i that it's not this is my favorite song from the album i love it it's so much fun it's just it's got such a nice message to it you can just listen to it and enjoy it and have it be a party song for yourself or you can really come at it with more teeth and dig down into a meeting and get something else out of it. And those are my favorite kind of songs where you can have it kind of both ways. Right. Cause the music allows you to just kind of get lost in it and you can just listen to it without thinking too deeply into it, as you mentioned, and still have a great time with it. You you can dance to it. You can just jam out to it. Uh, It has a lot of layers musically, even though it is pretty stripped down and raw overall, but there's, enough that that funk guitar is just amazing and like you said the bass guitar line is great stellar yeah and just the way the song is structured and the fact that it has just this amazing music has really cool lyrics behind it is what makes it special and to me and to most people who listen to this song and um i'm glad that it became one of prince's more well-known early songs even though at the time it was a dud from the commercial standpoint nah. but who cares you know it's it's been almost 40 years uh, commercial success is irrelevant at this point to the song like this it's just how how did it last in prince's legacy how how was right. it able to where does it stand in in the scope of prince's legacy and it stands tall uh, absolutely and you know what insight does it give you into his his growth and his upbringing and his inspiration I think that there's so much to be understood from the song that's really valuable and important. And, you know, I, like you said, it stands tall in his legacy because it's it's got such deep meaning, but it's so fun and it's funky. It's all good stuff. Yeah, it really it really kind of set the tone for the next few years of, of how Prince would present himself mm-hmm. artistically as being somebody who was willing to um, go against the grain and not do what everybody else was doing. And this is kind of like his mission statement in a way. I mean, this whole album is, but this song in particular is a bit of a mission statement for his early career, how he wanted to not be looked at as as just an artist who could do one thing, and he was like a one-trick pony. Yeah. He wanted to put himself out there as being an artist that, could do it all and uh and he wasn't gonna let racial biases hold him back yeah um, he wasn't gonna let gender bias hold him back so what if he wanted to dress how he dressed yeah if he wanted to wear a frilly shirt he was gonna wear a frilly shirt and he was gonna rock it damn it he and he and he did it for a <laughs> long time too i mean yes. this was this was just the beginning and prince's look in the 70s was kind of evolving but with dirty mind the music and the sound kind of came together in a way that hadn't before and af- after this you know, people look at this album as kind of like the the touchstone to prince's early 80s and up through up to purple purple rain right because it, it was him expressing how he was going to present himself through the story song yeah and and making sure that everybody knew that this is this was his style this was his frame of mind this is what he wanted to put out there that everybody was going to enjoy he wanted everybody to enjoy his music and this is a song that i think speaks a little bit to that even though it doesn't talk about creating music it talks about creating an atmosphere where everybody can enjoy his music you know yeah and that's, Well, and I think maybe it was more of an atmosphere of creativity. It it didn't necessarily have to be music either. And I think that's maybe why 
music wasn't specifically talked about because it wasn't just music. It was creativity of all kinds, dancing yes. and art and poetry and, you know, music kind of goes hand in hand with that. And all of those things, they all inform one another and are inspired by one another. And that's the kind of community that he wanted to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uptown, the way I understand it, the uptown of the, of the seventies and early eighties was, it was an artistic community. There was yes. a lot of that. And it wasn't, as you mentioned, it wasn't just music. Yeah. Um, music is just one of many, many, many forms of art. So, and like you said, that, that it's probably why he didn't specifically talk about creating music because that, yeah, there's, there's so many ways that people were hanging out in uptown expressing themselves i'm sure there were like poetry slams and there were you know independent <laughs> films that were being shown there and uh, filmmakers and musicians and yeah. painters and just poet poets and writers it's just it was all good yeah okay um any Are, other comments you wanted to make about nope that? that's it since you stole my paisley park <laughs> revelation <laughs> i don't have anything else to add but thank you for okay. having me on it's been great like I said, great minds think alike, and uh, <laughs> I, I stand by that. You know, we both have the same thought, so it's our collective thought. There we go. That's, that's I'll how we're going it. to end this episode, our collective thought. Agreed. All right, well, thanks, Christy. Thanks for joining me again on this episode of Thank the Press for Wine Prince Lyric Podcast. I appreciate you joining me, and hope to talk to you again soon. You've been listening to the Press for Wine Prince Lyrics Podcast. I've been your host, Jason Brenninger. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode talking about Uptown with Christy from the Mountains in the Sea podcast. Love to hear from you. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Press Rewind, Prince Search Podcast. Until next time, thank you very much. Uh-huh.